All right, guys. Our next guest is searching for a dance partner at UFC 229. Currently ranked number five in the UFC's lightweight division. You last saw him dominating Edson Barbosa back in April. One of the best dressers in the UFC. The Motown phenom himself, Kevin Lee. Welcome back to Submission Radio. How are you today, man? Always good to be here. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Very nice. Where are you joining us from right now? It looks like your house. Is this a nice little sort of outdoor area you got going on? Yeah, yeah, it's my backyard. Uh, you know, sunny Las Vegas, you know, what, what can we say? Uh, just got done doing some training earlier, so I like to kick back afterwards, you know, have a little bit of food, get some, get some stuff done, uh, enjoying myself, as I say. Of course. I remember last time you joined us from a sauna, so we were very curious where you were going to join us from. And this is probably one of the nicest sort of backgrounds we've had for a guest in quite a long time, so we, we, we appreciate it. You're up there, Kevin Lee. I was going to say... You know, always trying to do bigger and better, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was going to say, so you were calling for this Anthony Pettis fight the other week. You were very optimistic when you met with the UFC matchmakers. They seemed to like the idea. Now he's fighting Tony Ferguson. So what exactly happened there? How come, how come they didn't give you Anthony Pettis to fight? You know, I guess that's... I, I kind of got it. You know, they were looking for a fight for Tony. Uh, and he stole my fight from me. Like, that, that's what it's going to boil down to. So, hmm. me and him, I, you know, we already got some bones to pick. That's going to be another one added on top of the list. Uh, I thought that would have been the right fight to make, even if they didn't put it on that 229 card. I know they were looking for a headliner for that Milwaukee card. Uh, what better headliner than me versus Anthony Pettis on that one? But mm. we'll, we, we're going to have to see how this whole thing shakes up now. You know, I think Tony was the X factor in that. Uh, you know, I think they when, – when I talked to him first – they were of the mind that he wasn't going to be ready, just like everybody else. But uh, I guess he's going to go ahead and rush his uh, rush his recovery in order to stop my shine. So what can I say? Mm. You had an interesting reaction to Justin Gaethje's win over James Vick this past week and a whole bunch of money faced emojis, and you tagged Justin. What exactly did you mean by that? Were you impressed at how he was able to put James Vick away? I was smiling the whole fight. Uh, I love that fight. Is is. It's more is way more appealing to me now too. Uh, Justin is, it, it just is a mark, and, and you know I, I I'm like a, I'm like a lion. Every day I wake up, I just try and look for my next target. I look for my next meal, and uh, right there, Justin showed me him, uh, himself. So I, I like that. I like a fight, especially like that, because Justin's a fucking madman. He, he, so he's gonna bring out the best in me, and he's really gonna let me show off for the rest of these guys that already know the business. I'm in a situation right now where I'm having a hard time getting fights because guys know when you sign up to fight me, you you signing up for a hard fight. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna win that fight. Uh, so not a lot of people are signing that line. Justin might just be crazy enough to do it. So like I I was all smiles. I'm like, man, all right, I got I got me a dance partner if anything. So if you were sort of looking at a list of guys and and opponents in your in your mind of who you might fight next, whereabouts is Justin Gaethje on that list? Is he is he at the top of that list? He he's about the the most uh the most secure one. You know what I mean? He he's the one that that I know for sure uh we can make it happen. Especially you know they they have got they've got main event spots that they're trying to fill. Uh, Justin, all his fights have been main events. You know my last couple fights have been main events. So that uh, that's a perfect uh, uh scenario that we can make something happen. But you never know. This is MMA. A lot of these these guys fall off in this sport. Uh, a lot of things get moved around and changed around. So I'm staying ready regardless. Uh, I said originally that I was going to be ready for that 229 card. That's still in the books for me. So we we're gonna see, especially with them adding Tony and him coming trying to come back too early on that knee. Uh, there might be some moving parts there, but. Gaethje, uh, I think Gaethje is the long run and and the the my kind of my main target right now. What what about Ally Quinta? We heard uh, that apparently the UFC wants you to fight him in the in the UFC Milwaukee card. Is that true? You know the UFC won a lot of things, I guess. You know, and and I can sit here and 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 I told myself this a couple of days ago. I'm like I can sit here and like and worry myself to death on what they think and what they're trying to do and what's what's so and so moving about. Really, all I can do. Is, is sit back and, and worry about me. You know, like, the, the main thing is I've got a lot of time left in this game. So the only thing I've been worried about these past couple of weeks is just getting better, just getting stronger. Uh, I've been telling them for years, they better catch me while I'm young because I'm still getting better. Like, the rest of these dudes, they're going to be falling off, and, and I'm still rising up. So I'm just worried about me. If they want to make the Al fight happen, okay, but I'll be playing too many games. So, I mean, that, that's, on, that's really on him whether he want to accept it or not. If they approach me with it, I'll take it. We'll see. 
But uh, I'm on a bigger and better, and, I, and I'm looking at bigger challenges than that. Ah, so just to clarify, they haven't officially come to you with that fight. They haven't approached you about it yet, or, or they have already yeah. asked you. No, nah, not not officially. You know, the last I heard was uh, was me and Pettis being made. Uh, that was the last that Pettis heard too. I, I'm hearing, and uh, you know, Pettis walked in, and and he he walked in with the with the intention of negotiating a fight towards me, and they hit him with with uh, Tony out of nowhere. So I don't even think they know what they're doing yet. You know, I'm kind of in the driver's seat. I'm making these these ideas for them, and then they go ahead and, and take them and run with them. So I'm still I'm back in the driver's seat, and I'm gonna see where I take myself. I, I want to see where this car ride of Kevin Lee takes you, but I, ju I just have to say, as a fan, you and Al going back and forth, it seems like for so long, I feel like it has to lead somewhere. I feel like there has to be a, a, a fight somewhere at the, end of the end, at the end of the rainbow, even though you're looking at big and random things, don't you think? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, and that's definitely one that I got to get back. Um, it'll just come on my terms, and it'll come when, when I want. You know, I told Al years ago that if he didn't take the fight with me, Back in uh, this was San Diego, uh, UFC, I think 190 or like the, one of those fight night cars where I fought um, 2015. I told him if he didn't take the fight with me then, then I was going to pass him up. And then, uh, you know, now your boy is the A side. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I It's going to come on my terms when I wanted to. I like a Justin Gaethje fight. It, it, it appeals me a little bit more that style do. Um, especially I can I can go out there and really have an exciting fight and not just a one sided beating. Um so that kind of that kind of appeals to me a little bit more as I get closer and closer with it, and, I, and I'm thinking about it more. Uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned the A side thing because we spoke to Al last week. He didn't he didn't like that comment. He didn't like you saying the A side, and he said that he's still your daddy. I mean, I'm assuming that when you guys fight, you'd sort of want to make you'd want to become his daddy, right? Man, Al Al know the business. Al know the real deal, and he know that it, he's talking that, but he really gonna be playing games at the end of the day. Uh, when I approached on him fighting me in, in October on this card, he still, it, that's when he really got like, you, you can see he pulled back a lot. He's talking about, oh, you want to fight in China and all this instead. I'm like, come on, you either want to fight or you don't. You know, and when he took the fight with, with Gaethje, this last one, you know, he signed the contract and didn't bother showing up. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste my time with somebody like that. If he got better things to do, then I got better things to do. And that's what's going to get done. If he want, if he's serious about the fight. Um, then he knows the the right mediums to approach. It's a lot of different ways. You gotta, uh, you know, you gotta go through a couple people to get to me. You know, <laughs> I ain't I ain't one of these dudes that's gonna sit here and go back and forth with you on Twitter. I'm working. I I got, I got better things to do. I, I'm I got world championships to win. Mm. You mentioned Justin Gaethje, and you would be an exciting fight. How would you see that fight sort of playing out? We've seen Justin sort of come close to beating some big names, but then sort of his style sort of fails him a little bit. How would you see you and him going down if that did happen? Yeah, Gaethje is Gaethje is interesting. You know, he he he's definitely the 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 road into. You can see he he's like that that uh, that border in between the top five and not. Um, and I, I I think you just have to play him smart and you have to crush him. Uh, but then at the end of the day, your heart you gotta have that heart and it's gonna come out and he's gonna bring it up out of you. So I want to fight like that. I want to fight that somebody's gonna make me fight. Um, just so I can really show the rest of these guys what the real deal is. They already all know, you know, you don't hear none of these guys ever putting my name in their mouth for a reason. They already all know against a fight with somebody like Gaethje who can't stay in there. He can take a beating and he can keep on going and uh, he's going to bring your heart up out of you. So a fight like that, especially in a five rounder, as a competitor, that get, that, that, that'll that get me up in the morning. Mm. If you had to sort of compare between him and Al, who do you think is the harder fight for you? Gaethje for sure is the harder fight. Uh, Al's been doing the same things. Al, Al's been out, you know, selling uh, selling houses and shit over in New York. <laughs> Go back to doing that, laying out the cookies, uh, you know, sending the text messages and passing out the flyers at his local uh, little grocery store and stuff. See if he can get some more going on with that. He's been more worried about that than actually fighting. He's been more worried about going back and forth on Twitter. Justin been working this whole time. Justin's definitely the harder fight, and, and and that's what appeals to me more. I want the harder fight. This way I've been for my whole career. I always want the biggest challenges possible, and and this is no different. You know, mm -hmm. is Gage is gonna be the bigger challenge. It's gonna wake me up more in the morning. Uh, it's gonna be the longer road to the top for sure. But I've always taken a long road because that's the better road. Mm. How important was it for you to get onto that UFC 229 card? Because 
you know, we know with Khabib, there's always issues around weight cutting and what's going to happen. Were you trying to get on that card as a possible backup in case anything fell through on that fight? And are you still going to try and get on that card in that case? No, I, I probably won't try and get on the card. I think it's it's, it's already kind of filled, you know what I mean? Especially with them making that uh, Pettis and, 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 uh, and Tony fight happening. Mm. But I'm still going to be staying ready because, again, now you got four of the top lightweights uh, and – Three of those guys are, are pretty prone to pull, pulling out. So, uh, you know, let's say I'm I'm a stay sharp. I'm always I'm always gonna be training anyway. You know, I, I'm just gonna keep my weight low and, and and stay ready for any moment because this is MMA. You never know what's gonna happen. You know, it, it, so uh, I match up real well with all those guys, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to. And and that's what I've been calling for for a long, long time. It would have been nice to be on that 229 card because they know I would have stole that shine. Tony know it, the, the, everybody know it. <laughs> you know that's that's why he went ahead and, and took it from me. But you know, hey, look, look, it's it, it's it's all good over here. I love the picture of you on Instagram where you're like, I'm starting training camp. Basically, the opponent is unknown, but you start. Are you are you still in training camp at the moment? It's that's I know because if you don't get on 229, that might you know your your fight might be a little bit delayed. But you're still in training camp as of now. Is that the case? Yeah, I'm still going to be training. Uh, I'm, I've been doing a lot of my work down at the PI, especially. Uh, they, they've been doing a lot of monitoring on me and, and a lot of tests, and and uh, and, I, and I'm make sure I stay on top of that and make sure that that you know my body will be ready to go. Uh, I'll, I'll take a little bit of of, of leeway. You know, I, next week is my birthday, so I'm gonna go out, maybe go to Lake Tahoe or something like that, and enjoy that. Mm. Uh, well, we, so you know, I'm still gonna be training full time, like I always do, anyway. But we'll. We'll have to see. I'll be ready once once October six come around. That's for sure. If regardless of what happens, I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna be showing up to fight. Mm. Uh, let's look at the lightweight landscape a little bit because I feel like your division is absolutely booming. We've never seen lightweight like this before. You've got so many great matchups. What do you think of this Poirier and Nate Diaz fight that's happening at UFC uh, two thirty in Madison Square Garden? And if if you win your next fight, where does it sort of put you? in terms of the next title shot compared to these guys fighting who are looking like they might get the next shot as well. Yeah, it gets interesting. Um, mm. It's it, Like you said, it's an exciting time to be a part of it too because I'm, cause I'm like, I've, I've been sitting back these past couple, really like the, the, the past month or two, kind of sitting back, kind of watching how everybody's moving and, and, and seeing what's really going on. Uh, I'm going to probably spend some more time doing that, kind of see, see where the pieces are falling. Because like you said, Diaz and Poirier are out there. I think Diaz probably wins that match. Uh, that leaves Diaz and McGregor next, regardless if McGregor win or lose. Like we we all know it. <laughs> it's a funny game, you know what I mean? So so it's it's gonna be, it's it's some shakers and movers. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, it's, it's it's a lot of what's good is it's a lot of options. And you know I'm so young in the game. I'm, I'm around this game for a long long time. So mm. the rest of these gonna be you know they got to get it while they can uh a dude like tony 34 you got to get it while you can uh me i can sit back a little bit i can enjoy myself i can get better and better and better and then uh when i do look to take over because i'm gonna hold that for a long time who do you think wins the ufc 229 between khabib and connor i feel like you're a great guy to ask because obviously you being the excellent wrestler that you are who do you think ends up as the the champion after that night's done I think Connor probably sleeps him. You know, the more I, the more I think about it, and the more I I, I, I get closer to it, uh, Connor probably gonna sleep him. You know, Khabib uses the same interests. He he when he's a monster on top. I'll give him that. Not much of a finisher up there. You know, he he got to a spot like with Michael Johnson where he's practically begging Mike, just give up. Like I don't know how to finish you. Like just give up for me. Uh, so you know. I don't know. As he gets closer, he got to do that round after round after round after round. And uh, somebody like Connor, you walk onto that left hand like how he like to be like to do, then you know that's a sleeper right there. So I'm I'm pushing towards more and more. I'm pushing towards Connor, even though I'm not really liking Connor's uh, the the matchup for him. So it's 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 it's, it's a good fight. I mean, the UFC know what they're doing. They put on the right fight because you really don't know who's gonna win that one. But I'm I'm leaning towards Connor. Mm. Well, speaking of Connor, we saw there was a little bit of a a situation. You had a bit of a role with uh, his partner uh, Dylan Dennis. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Apparently, there's something building here, some kind of matchup possibly coming up. Yeah. So I mean, I came out on uh, I think it was on Ariel's show, and I pretty much said what it was. You know. It, 
you know, Connor think Dylan is such this great grappler and all this. And I told him what, when 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 Dylan was over here, I threw the boy on his head, and he knew it too. Uh, so then I guess when when Warrior got back to him and Ariel told him, uh, instead of just saying what the real was, he he went ahead and challenged me to a hundred thousand uh, dollar grappling match. I look his people. It, if he's serious, I accept it right away. But uh, his people reached out to mine. I accepted it again. Um, I added the stipulation that we do combat jujitsu. So in case he go for my leg or something, I can slap the shit out of him. Uh, <laughs> it don't even have to be no arena, no nothing. We could just be in a back training room somewhere, you know, with a little video camera. We can set up our phone and and, and throw it up on YouTube, and you know, I, I take his money from him. But we, that's that's very down though on my uh, on my to do list. You know, it, it's it, it's starting up high, and then it go all the way down to Dylan Dennis uh, at some point because. I, you know, I'm a busy man. I got things to do. <laughs> yes. But that's Hands the, to shake. That, that, that's crazy that they actually reached out. So when you say his people reached out to you, what do you, what do you mean by that? Like his his management reached out and they wanted to do it at a, what, what were they thinking? What, where did they want to do it? I'm not sure. You know, it, they didn't even get that far, I don't think. Uh, his management reached out to mine. Wow. Um, so I don't I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't even think they got that far, to be honest. I think they they thinking of a time and place. Uh, I think maybe they went back to him and asked him if we can do combat jujitsu, and then he shut it down. So I don't know. We look. I, I'm gonna call Danny. I, I'll, I'll hit him up in a few days or so once I figure out what the rest of what I'm doing is going on and, and really see what we talk about with that. It's nothing to me. I roll every day anyway. You know, I'll go out there and roll with him. I mean, who cares? Like, wh what's gonna happen? I'm a little. It's, so the fuck what? Just it's, it'll be a hundred grand. So I mean, I'm not. Look, it'll be a hundred grand. So I'm not gonna be. <laughs> I'm not going to be all happy about it or nothing, but, you know, hey, look, all is fair in love and war, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just out of curiosity, how come you guys were rolling together anyway? Like, is, is this a regular thing, and was it just a one-time thing, or did you guys roll sort of uh, for a few times over a while? No, he came up to Drysdale's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, over here in Las Vegas. You know, I think he was just here for the week or so, uh, and then it just happened to be one of those things. And, you know, look, I mean, I just, it, you know, look, somebody, it, that's just how I am. If you... I don't get, you know, we cool and all, but, you know, if somebody asks me something, I'm going to give them the real straight up answer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to bullshit around and I'm not going to doing all this. I'm going to give you the real of what it was and it, it is what it is. Guys get the better of me all the time in, in training. Uh, hell, there's a couple guys that can say that about me right now. So, you know, if they come out and they say that, then it is what it is. If I if I issue the challenge, then I guess I got to put my money where my mouth is. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine UFC 229 fight week? This thing goes down. It'll be maybe bigger than uh, the second biggest thing in town that weekend. Um, just quickly, if you guys <laughs> didn't you have imagine? this. Yeah, think <laughs> about it. I mean, and then I, I feel like maybe even a Conor McGregor and Adam Lobov might come by and, and, and visit you, Kevin. And then things would get even more interesting. <laughs> but maybe even then Khabib comes in your corner. This is going to be a whole thing. It's going to be like a WrestleMania match. Just quickly, how would you see that role going between you and Dylan if if that did happen? How would you how would you see that the outcome of that one? Like I said, that that's why I think we do combat jujitsu. I think it's a I think it's a good uh, middle ground. He knows he can't take me in MMA. I'm not gonna bullshit in a straight jujitsu match. He stands a he, he would stand a good chance, especially with the leg lock game. Uh, and he's just more accolated there. You know, he he's got a lot more experience. He's done it a lot more. If we do combat jujitsu, it's somewhere in the middle. You know. I think it's I think it's most fair and uh and, and then you know it's it's a toss up there. I mean I think I mount them and, and beat the hell out of them but you know what what can you say I, I think I beat them into submission. Let's say that. Wow, there you go. Kevin, we'll let you go in just a moment but just quickly we saw that you met our very own Tai Tuivasa and Tyson Pedro. Uh I mean yeah. they're kind of the toast of the town around these parts. What what was your impression of those guys when you met them? You Aussie boys are, are something different. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I mean, and I mean that in a good way, in the best way possible. Sure. Uh, uh, Ty, definitely the next heavyweight champ of the world. Uh, you know, the man got the. It, it, it's at a certain point is more than just the punches and kicks. You know what I'm saying? Like it's the it's the he got that heart. He got the he got the fighter in him. Like I I, I really mess with Ty heavy. Uh, and you Aussie boys are something different. Like y'all, you know, y'all like to party. Y'all like to have fun. Like that was that was the last night of a full six week trip that I took through Asia. You know, on and off airplanes, seven hour flight. You know, ten hour flight, sixteen hour flight. That was the last day 
and uh, I took more damage in that one day than, than <laughs> <laughs> oh, six weeks. Ended up missing my flight the next day, uh, having to rebook it and all that. Uh, while while wild nights. What can you say? Was Shuey's to blame for this, Kevin? A- absolutely. I mean, they tried to get me to do one. I mean. Look, I went about to fuck up my new new Adidas, I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, okay, I, I know you can't really give us a recount of the whole night, but what would you say was the craziest part of that night? If you had to rebook the planes and, and change your trip, that's pretty crazy. Any any crazy stories from that night? At one point, we had a bottle of Belvedere that mm. was uh, about, I don't even know if it can fit, if that can fit in this frame <laughs> right here. About that size, and... uh. And, and Pedro just took it right to the head. And I was like, whoo. And it was an ungodly amount after we had already been drinking all day. Not only that, we got drunk on wine at the at the Singapore event. Because Singapore is very nice. You know, Singapore is very classy. It's it's more like, you know, is it, they, they drink wine and, and and drink whiskey out there. You know what I mean? Like, mm. real not, it's classy. We got wine drunk, and then we went to the club and drank Belvedere for the rest of the night. Mm. <sighs> That's it. <laughs> Summer nights, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Summer nights. I would have loved to see everyone drinking wine and then ties their drinking wine, but out of a shoe. I, th- I think that would just sort of be, be the he picture. He was chugging per- wine. He was chugging. That, 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 that's not say drinking wine. He was chugging wine. <laughs> classic, classic. All right, well, man, we, we could chat to you for hours, but we'll let you go. We don't want to be too greedy with your time. I feel like we already have been. Don't forget to follow the man on Twitter and Instagram at Motown Phenom. Kevin, we, we can't wait to see who you get matched up with, man. We, we hope this training camp goes well. Maybe this Dylan Dennis thing comes through. Maybe you, I mean, I'm assuming you're going to be in, in town for UFC 229 because you live there. So thank you so much for your time. Man. I really appreciate it. And um, good luck with getting a big fight next. Thank you, my man. You'll be the first to know.